This is the Hypothetically Sound Podcast. Hosted by Alec, Randy, and Xavier. Where we take a hypothetical look at the world around us. Exploring the what-ifs, maybes, and how-comes. Join in on the unfiltered, raw, and real conversations as we explore the world around us. Welcome back to Hypothetically Sound. We hope you are having a great day. As always, I am one of your hosts, Randy, joined by the other host, Alec. I'm Alec. And today we are continuing our journey on Apple Music's top 100 albums of all time. And today we are on album number 71, Trans Europe Express by Kraftwerk. I don't have to ask ask this because I know the answer, but I'm going to anyways, Alec. Did you know anything about Kraftwerk before we started this journey? Fortunately not. (laughs) Fortunately not, indeed. Uh, Kraftwerk is the pioneer essentially of industrial minimalist electronic music yeah um, i love the pioneers to electronic music <laughs> on this list historically right. historically they've had huge uh impacts in our scores yeah no, um they're an interesting german band uh to say the least for the people at home who are like us and have never ever ever heard of craft work i got you don't worry As I said, they are a German band. This is their sixth studio album. Um, In this album, they ditched what they've done before, which was industrial uh, improvised music uh, and decided that they wanted to focus more on sequenced rhymes, minimalism, and manipulated voices. Um, It worked for them in current time. So this is what's interesting about uh, Trans Europe Express. They only charted at 119 in America, mm-hmm. and they ranked roughly 30 to 40 everywhere else, other than France, where they ranked number three. They were not commercially successful in their time. But in the early 2000s, uh, late 2010s, mm-hmm. people really started to like their sound and give them their flowers uh saying that they are the pioneers of electric music as we know it people like daft punk uh take some of their uh knowledge and some of their electric music uh from this band so that is why they are on this list uh at least in my opinion it is fully because of uh their influence on music and what people look back and see not what they were successful at their time yeah i suppose Mm -hmm. um it's an interesting (laughs) album if you like electronic music if you uh just want to listen to something that is completely different a tamer mr roboto uh this is the band for you Uh, that's all i got to say about them you got anything you want to add yeah, I think uh, giving them credit towards sounding like a tamer Mr. Roboto is setting people up for failure. I do not hear it at all. Mm, okay, fair. Uh, because at least Mr. Roboto was catchy. Yeah. So. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's just get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you said, uh, they are a minimalist electronic band. Um, and we start this eight track album at track number one, Europe Endless. Yeah. And this song was endless. Yeah. It's nine minutes and 41 seconds long of a whole lot of bullshit. And we say this all the time. If music's going to be this long, it has to have interesting changes and keep you engaged. It is a minimalist song. So that should tell you the answer. I mean, to be fair, it did have some changes to it, and they were okay for about ten seconds, and then mm-hmm. like it, like it got so mundane and repetitive. Yeah, and like remember, if you're a fan of these guys, it's nothing against you or like against the band. This is our first time listening to them. And to be and, fair, like I think they hit their objective. When I think of seventies like electronic music, dude. When do you think w- of seventies electronic music? Like when I watch like movies where they go in arcades and like sci- old sci fi movies. Like this is the type of music that I picture I would use if I made those movies. 
All right, that's weird. Anyways, uh, what'd you rate it? I gave it a four out of ten. I gave it a two out of ten. You know, I I catch up to you at some point. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, that brings us to the Hall of Mirrors. Yeah, which actually has content on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the lyrics, uh, interesting. Yeah, there, there's something. It's a decent story. Yeah, but uh, again, very repetitive. It's, too long. it's but, too long. Yeah. Um, it had like this one had a retro, retro like game feel, arcade feel to me. Like when it first came on, like I could picture uh this being like the song they use in Stranger Things when they go into the arcade, or if a movie is set in the seventies and they're going to arcades. Like this is the music that they could use in the background that wouldn't people wouldn't bat an eye, that wouldn't be overwhelming or take away from the scene. See, yeah, I honestly don't see that like at all. I'm a big old hater today, bro. Uh, it was so boring and mundane. I cannot see it being used as like in any scene that has any vibrance to it. But that's the point of like background music. It's supposed to just be background. You're supposed to hear it for a second and be like, oh, okay. And that's it. <laughs> and I, I just think their minimalist style fits I that. think, see, I think background music, although, yes, it's supposed to be in the background. It like just like background pieces and stuff. It's supposed to give a sense of something to it that helps improve the scene, and I don't just don't see it. Fair, fair. It uh, also sounds like like in this song they're trying to be way too artsy with their work. Like they're trying way mm-hmm. too hard, in my opinion. No, it it feels very performative. It feels like it, it like it's something that needs to be seen. Like you want to listen to uh, the blues guys. The like painted blues guys, the uh, blue man group, yeah, blue man group. Thank you. You want to listen to them on a CD or in streaming? You would you need to see them in person to get the full effect of their music. I feel like maybe that's what craft work was is someone that you needed to see in person to get their full uh range of music. That's funny you say that. What did you rate this by the way? Uh, four out of ten. I gave this a two and a half out of ten. Yeah, fair. But it was funny that you said that we had to see him in person because this next song, The Showroom Dummies, was actually created in response to someone's review of them seeing them in person. (laughs) I don't know if you knew that, (laughs) but the setup is insane. And this is, by this point, I realized that this band's whole gimmick is being emotionally are emotionless and detached from their song. Very stereotypically German. Yes. Um, But yeah, Showroom Dummies makes, like, if this is the response to someone calling him said thing. Emotionless. Yeah. It makes me feel like seeing them in person is just as bad visually in my opinion. Yeah, no. if, 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 If that's, like, someone calls them Showroom Dummies, like it, it, I guess it makes sense, and like I can picture it. I can picture it, uh, especially seventies German, like the culture, uh, very style, very like emotionless, mm-hmm. uh, stereotypical. Like, like what you think of Germans back then, at least. Uh, it makes sense. And this song, I didn't, bro. It was just the same thing for seven minutes, and I, I get it. It's minimalist. It's repetitive. It's that. That's their goal. But it's not for me. If that's your jam, if listen to minimalism style music yeah. and repetitiveness, perfect for you. It is not for me. You've heard of me say it a ton. <laughs> like, I get impatient. And so this was yeah. seven minutes of just the same thing. Ass. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty bad. Um, also, I just want to say, these guys, like, when they saw that showroom dummy review or whatever, it must have like really hurt them because apparently <laughs> like they made the song and then in music videos in in concerts even they have put dummies in place of them. Yeah. And like part of me kind of feels like it's just them being petty, but another part of me feels like that that shit probably actually really hurt them. Mhm. And I, I feel like it's just kind of a get back and look you don't get our music. You're the showroom dummy kind of deal. Again, it just gives off a lot of try hard to be artsy. Yeah. Um, also, this song is just a chore to listen to. Like, I like the beat more uh, uh, than the rest of the other two so far. Mm-hmm. 
but this is such a chore to listen to. It's so mundane. And then they added sound effects in that, and it was so cheesy, bro. Yeah. Like, not unnecessary sound effects. I gave this a two and a half out of ten. No, so listening to this music, before we get to the rest of the album, which will be quick, um, if I said, what do you think the album cover would look like? What, what would you guess? I don't know, fucking showroom dummies now? Like, before listening to this? Mm-hmm. Or it'd just be a train. It's a Trans-American Express, or Trans-European uh, Express, right? It's a train. It is the four German members of the band in suits and ties. Not in the same color suits and ties. Two are wearing gray, two are wearing black. It is different colors everywhere. Uh, looking in different directions. Like, I don't think they took the picture at the same time. I'm pretty sure they each took pictures separately and then kind of got put on the poster. Uh, right. it, it It is weird. They perform in suits uh, while, like, standing in, a, like, a U shape. It is, it is interesting. They are an interesting band. Yeah, they're, they're something. Uh, what did you give Showroom Dummies? Uh, a 2.5. I am finally below you. I gave it a two. <laughs> Which moves us to... What the fuck is this cover album? <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyway, sorry. Uh, sorry. Which moves us to what conceptually could have been really cool if done properly. So <laughs> Trans Europe Express is track number four. And it leads directly, not, there isn't a part, like, it leads directly, the instrument doesn't end, into metal on metal. And then metal on metal, the instrumental doesn't end, and leads straight into Obsberg. 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 A-B-Z-U-G. There's no R. Why did you keep saying R? I said Obsberg. You're adding an R, bro. Where am I adding an R? After the the fucking Z. You're saying Zerg. How do you say it? Abzug. Abzug. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Why are you coming at me? Because you added an R and there's not I one. I didn't hear an R in what I was saying. <laughs> Can't wait till you listen to this back and you hear the <laughs> R and you're like, we have a fucking idiot. Anyways, See what yeah. this album is doing to us? Yeah. It makes me a hater, bro. Uh, but yeah, so conceptually, it is three tracks that all go together. And conceptually, think about it, this is about a train. It is about the Trans-Europe Express, the train that goes all across Europe. So, like, the track could have been, these three tracks could have been about the creation, uh, or the idea of creating, and then the creation, and then the ending of it. Or it could have been about just a long train ride. But I don't think it's about any of that. Well, just, literally, one of those is about a train. Like, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. They all melded in my head, but I'm pretty sure Trans Europe Express. There is lyrics to it. No, it there, it's literally it, getting on and off at stations. Trans, you know, they all like Trans Europe Express and uh, Abzug. Uh, all both have lyrics. They have the exact same lyrics. Uh, and so, like I said, that's why I said it could could have been about that, but it doesn't listen or sound that way. So I don't I don't know what it's what it's supposed to be, uh, but yeah, it's just repetitive noise with lyrics at this point. Yeah, um, it's overall it just feels really long. It's like Trans Europe Express is six minutes and thirty seconds long. It feels that long. It's pretty awful. There is some variety to the sound of this particular part of it, uh, and it's definitely the most listenable sound so far in the album. So I gave it a 3 out of 10. You thought it was listenable? Like, beat-wise, yeah. Oh, I gave it a 2 out of 10. Dude, you acting like you fuck. I fucking gave it a 9. Calm down, okay? I, 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 one point. You gave something on here a 4, which is insane. Yeah, I thought the first two at least were, like, decent. Anyways. What did you give? You gave it a 2, you said? Yeah. Yeah, well, then we get to Metal on Metal, and honestly, I gave Metal on Metal a 2, and I should have gave it a 1. It's the same sound, except they're, like, grinding metal together. Yeah, it's literally Metal on Metal. Like, it is the same sound with Metal on Metal. It's, it's like the name of it fits perfectly, I guess. Playing the metal together, but it's like, it sounds like stocks footage metal. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't sound like they're doing it in the mic. It just sounds like they found it on their fucking, like, sound drive, and we're like, yeah, we're going to use this on this right here. And then it kind of shifts the the sound, like the beat 
a little bit and it gets into Abzug, right? Yeah. And this is when I realized that the train apparently never fucking ends. Mm-hmm. And I this is hell. <laughs> Like, I'm glad it wasn't, like, the same beat as the other ones. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of change to it. And you're like, oh, man, it's just a good transition. I thought it had the exact same beat. Uh, It has a different one, for sure. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I'm 155. Go look! Go look! I'm 150% sure it's a different fucking beat. I am 100% positive. Okay, 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 okay. (laughs) Go look and be astonished and wrong. Anyways... It has a different beat, and then all of a sudden you start hearing the Trans Europe Express lines over and over again, and then it's just it's just rough. That also got a two out of ten for me. Uh, got a one out of ten for me. Which moves us to Fran track Schubert. seven. Track seven. <laughs> uh, Fran Schubert. Yeah. Um. Again, at at this point, I'd given up on the album. Uh, it was the same thing, repeated over and over and over and over and over again. I gave it a one out of ten. Uh, yeah, I gave it a chance actually. Um, this feels like it should be the final song, and it starts off building up to something grand, like it gives it that kind of like sound. And then all of a sudden, it just doesn't. Like, two minutes go by, and then three minutes go by, and four minutes, and you only have 30 seconds left of the song, and you're like, oh, It fuck. is the same beat. They just change what instrument no, is doing it's the beat. Not. No, it's it not. It is. No, it's not. They just change the pitch of it. We're already on Frank Schubert, so let's. how about we finish Frank Schubert? Okay, we got I one did. last song. I gave it Anyways, one out of 10. it's a three out of 10 for me, and then wow. it goes, it transitions to Endless Endless, which I gave a five out of 10. I, I'm unironically because it's the end of the fucking album. It's the same thing as Friends. It is It is the end of the album, and I was glad it was over, so I gave it a 5 out of 10. I scored it as like a 3, but on paper, it's a 5 out of 10. I gave it a 1 out of 10. It was the same thing as the track before. It shouldn't I, have been track just, before. I just mixed the two. I just gave it a 3 out the of 10. The song it the title, thing. it's perfect for this album. Endless, it is endless, it is endless. Even when you think it's end, it probably just recycles. See, I thought I was irrational at the start, but you really descended into madness at the end of this. This is a very chaotic episode. With that being said, I would not recommend this out of 10. <laughs> That's, uh, this is the second well. album. This is the second album on this list that I have given a would not recommend out of 10. Both being part of similar genres. So maybe it's just me. Yeah, we could be just a straight up hater of minimalist electronic music. But like this shit's mundane, it's boring. And I, I don't need music to get me hype, okay? I listen to classical music, all right? Yeah. Although some classical music fucking go hard. I listen to classical music like when I'm drawing and stuff. So like I don't need music to get me hype, mm-hmm. okay? But I can't even listen to the shit in the background while doing other stuff. Like it is it is bad. It's yeah. like distractingly bad. No, I do not enjoy it in the slightest. This and Burial should never have been on this list. In my opinion, whoever made this list, I fear for some reason listening to this, like, did you just fucking Google obscure genre bending albums? And we're like, yeah, let's just put this on the fucking list and copy and paste the goddamn article. Like, bro. <laughs> no, like, this should have been both Burial and this should have been just like uh, honorable mentions for their influence on. Yeah, electric music, and then you actually put the good electric music on here. I couldn't tell you who it is, but I can tell you who it isn't. Yeah, oh God, now I can. Yeah, <laughs> I can for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, Alec, um, you, you want know, a shout out? You want a fucking shout out? Right? Yes, no, no, people no. People need something saved. I'll save fucking, the day. Uh, yeah. Okay. Shout out to everyone who didn't write this list. Okay, this is my first time. I shouted out everybody, but a single individual. Whoever picked this. To go on the list, you know what? Two individuals and Barrio. Whoever picked this in Barrio, probably the same person. Honestly, go fuck yourselves. Okay, shout out to everyone who didn't put that on the list. All right. Sorry, okay. I didn't mean to blow up. I didn't mean to blow up. I do know there are some people when they were putting this out on Twitter that were like, "Hell yeah, the whoever's making this list knows what they're talking about." Sorry for you guys. You're not shouted out this week either. <laughs> And okay. you saved the episode, Alec. You are like Batman. I am. I am. I'm the Dark Knight. 
Yeah. I'm the lighter knight. I'm the high yellow knight. You're just the lighter knight. I'm the light skinned knight. <laughs> oh god. But yeah, that's the episode. Um hope you guys enjoyed question mark. Um but yeah, it was something. It, it was an experience. Uh, we do have good albums coming up next this week. Wednesday, you get some Straight out of Compton by N.W.A. And Friday, you get Master of Puppets by Metallica. So I'm excited for those two albums, at least. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's what this week is holding in store. We hope you guys uh, like us, follow us, comment, share, you know, the drill on all the hypothetically sound social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, all of it. We're there. And as always, we hope you have a great day. Deuces. Bye. Thank you for listening to Hypothetically Sound. We hope you enjoyed the episode. All episodes can be found at hypotheticallysound.podbean.com, as well as on Apple, Spotify, and Pandora. For full on edited video versions of the podcast, please visit us at youtube.com slash hypotheticallysound.